Well, it is late July, uh, very late July, but still July, so it's not too late to do the July garden video. And July has been a month of phenomenal growth in the garden, and I'm happy to report that it's also been a phenomenal month for healing and recovery. So uh, everybody that sent out uh, good vibes and healing thoughts and prayers, thanks, because it, it worked. Um, We've had very, very nice recovery and uh, things are, we think, coming back to normal pretty soon here. So uh, that's pretty good. And I told her that we were going to make the uh, July garden video tonight and she was very happy about that. So so uh, we will uh, proceed on and uh, we'll start where we usually start, which is chives. Now the chives tend to look sort of neglected this time of the year because quite frankly, they are neglected, um, but they're still going strong and they're still harvestable, so uh, every once in a while I'll snip a few off of here. Um, next, right here in uh, bed one, we've got broccoli now, I mean, this is uh, cabbage. Um, and you can see that the leaves are kind of chewed up and have holes in them, but in the middle there are uh, nice little heads of, uh, of cabbage, and this is long storage cabbage, so once we've harvested it, we'll it will keep well in the uh, fridge for quite some time. The broccoli is almost done for. You can see there's still some um, uh, side shoots that have come up. They've also been hit, and hit been hit, and been hit by the uh, caterpillars pretty pretty badly. Um, but uh, we got a good crop out of them. And uh, Brussels sprouts still we have yet to see a Brussels sprout, but that's not unusual. Um, They've got some insect damage as well, but we just sprayed for them this weekend, so hopefully they'll come around and be okay. Meanwhile, the uh, Aunt Molly's ground cherries are um, doing great. They're sort of spreading all over the place, uh, which is what we expected. Um, but uh, these are the gardener's treats when they turn yellow like this, and then if you pop them open, they're yellow on the inside. That means they are ripe and ready. And um, here, let me show you this little clip because I'm not the only one that likes Aunt Molly's ground cherries. Hey, boy, looking for cherry t uh, ground cherries? Here we go. Here's one. Let me get it. I'll get it open for you. There you go. Got it? Yeah, they're good, aren't they? They're good, aren't they? Let's find another one for you. Here's another one. See that nice yellow color? Just a minute. Let me let me get it undone for you. Hold on. Wait a minute. Here, I'll get it. Just a minute. I gotta get that. I'm trying to do this one-handed. It's not so easy. There you go. Got it? Yeah. That's pretty good. Look, there's another one right here, right underneath you. Good stuff, huh? Everybody likes the gardener's treats. Uh, Molly's ground cherries. There you go. Good boy. So, yes, um, Aunt Molly's ground cherries are good for a gardener's treat and also for the gardener's helper. All right, that brings us along to um, uh, bush beans. And these bush beans, um, the plants themselves don't look so hot. Uh, we have harvested quite a bit of. Um, beans from them of uh, a couple of varieties but uh, they seem to be suffering a little bit I'm not really sure why um, this is the dried bean variety uh, which means they'll just stay here until you know these bean pods are completely dried up and that's when we'll harvest them but uh, the bush beans I'm a little disappointed in the way that they've been growing maybe it's something that I did wrong but meanwhile far from disappointing are the yard long. These are uh, black seeded Taiwan, I think they're called. But um, I pulled, oh, oh, uh, I'd say a pound, pound and a half off of this, um, this plant or these plants uh, just last night. And um, uh, I, I always say, you know, if you're going to grow uh, pole beans, uh, you should grow these at least once just for the fun of it because uh, they're just a riot. Uh, meanwhile, these are lima beans, and there's quite a few coming in, so it looks like we're going to get a 
fairly decent crop of lima beans. You can see quite a few over there. And uh, I kind of skipped over the um, rattlesnake uh, um, pole beans, and they are also doing pretty well. Not as many as there was last weekend, but um, they are doing pretty well. And uh, at the end of this bed is um, <clears throat> sweet potatoes. And I told you the sweet potatoes would eventually cover this uh, end of the bed, and they are darn close to that. And looks like they got some nice little blooms coming in, which I don't remember seeing on the sweet potatoes before. But um, they're uh, doing well. And uh, over on the bed two here, we've got uh, this orange... Jing orange, I think it's called, okra, and um, lots of large pods. Some of these might be a little too large. I let them go a little too long, but they're doing just fine. And um, I love having a little, you know, unusual color in the garden. Um, and uh, these do provide that, and they seem like healthy, um, healthy uh, uh, okra plants. Uh, on to summer squash. There's a nice little. Uh, striped zucchini. We've had quite a few of those. Um, the uh, plants themselves have seen better days, but um, they're still producing. And then this is a yellow zucchini, and uh, they've been producing quite well all the way along. And I think we also probably have quite a few of these um, uh, scallop sunburst uh, zucchini, some, uh, not zucchini, summer squash these are. Uh, that's a big one, probably a little too big. You see the size of it compared to my hand. Well, no, it's, it's not too bad. Um, and uh, they have been producing well. It's the only squash that I'm growing this year. The only one I'm growing purposely. And uh, Jessie is working on one of her excavation projects that she loves so dearly in the garden. And uh, we love to have them. The peas are all uh, pretty much done for. Uh, you can see maybe there's a couple more that are going to come in. But uh, they're pretty much burning up, uh, which is expected for this time of year. Um, we got a uh, not the best uh, pea harvest that we've ever had, but, uh, but not bad. Meanwhile, these uh, beets right next door here, uh, I don't know if you, yeah, you can see those. Those are just lovely, perfect beets. They hold fairly well in the soil meaning they're not going to get big and tough. Um, so I can take my time and harvest them as I, as I need them, but I have been stir-frying them in uh, uh, with uh, you know other vegetables. And because they're this light color, uh, these are touch-tone gold, I believe. Um, they don't, as I've said before, they don't um, uh, overpower the color of the other vegetables like red beets do. Now, this is just sort of neglect on my part. I left uh, the bolting lettuce. Um, I just never took it out because I didn't have anything I was going to plant in its place. Um, I did taste a few of those leaves. They are way too bitter to eat, um, but I just let them grow. I'll, I'll, I'll get them out of here soon enough. And uh, we do have carrots. Um, these are still, some of these are still pretty small, um, but they're coming in okay. And um, uh, they'll be good, good eaten. They hold fairly well in the soil for the most part, uh, at least for a while. And then I've got some radishes here that are neglected. Uh, and that often happens with the uh, uh, second planting of radishes. And then you'll see all over the place um, the marigolds. Now I think I mentioned this before, but all these marigolds are volunteers. Uh, meaning that they came up on their own. I didn't plant any of these. All I did was transplant them um, from where they came up to, um, you know, kind of the perimeter of the beds. Um, but uh, they're doing great all over the place. Uh, and uh, it's always nice to have marigolds around just because they bloom for so long and, again, give some nice color to the garden. Now, this may look bad, but it's really not. This is uh, exactly what you want to see in your onions. Um, and what they're indicating by falling over like this is that they're ready to be harvested. So um, you can see I've got a bunch of nice uh, red. These are called red zeppelin, which I laugh at the name every time. Um, they're all falling over, meaning they're, they're ready to be pulled. 
and um, <clears throat> these are candy, which are another favorite of mine, um, <clears throat> which are also close to being ready. I'll uh, try to do a video of uh, pulling the harvest. We just pull them and dry them, and uh, then, um, you know, uh, uh, get them inside, and I, I refrigerate them. Um, in the meantime, this is what the potato bed looks like. Uh, last time, I'm sure uh, it was like three feet tall and lush green, but everything dying back means that uh, we've got um, potatoes under there that are pretty much ready to be pulled. Uh, this grass needs to be pulled out of here too. <clears throat> A few other weeds in here that the gardener hasn't taken care of. Anyway, um, but uh, those over there on that side are completely done for. That's Red New Orleans, so they're ready. Um, where there's a little bit of green, I usually just let them go until they completely die back, and, and that's when I'll harvest them. But I'll come in here and uh, do the Red New Orleans uh, maybe this weekend. That brings us over into uh, bed number four, and that is uh, tomato land. Now on this end, we've got um, uh, San Marzano. And they are just starting to ripen. You can see all those lovely. I love that shape. It's uh, kind of a unique shape. This is this is called uh, uh, blossom end rot. Uh, it happens on some of the early San Marzanos, um, but uh, the later ones usually come in just fine. Uh, so I don't worry about it too much. Um, and as you can see, like that first one that I showed you, that was almost harvestable. We've pulled a few of these already, um, but they're very nice, very meaty uh, Italian style uh, tomatoes. Oh, it looks like one hit the floor there, and there's another one. This is, um, now Frankie likes tomatoes. Here, let me, in fact, I'm going to show you this clip of Frankie harvesting his own uh, Juliet tomatoes, because he loves them. So take a look at this. Did you get one? Good boy. Is that a good one? Is that a good one? That a boy. And then we'll go on. Um, this variety in this row here, and there's another one that's fallen down here, but it looks like it's, it's in fine shape, so it just sort of harvested itself. These are called um, New Girl, and uh, just a small little tomato, and they kind of got a pointy end. Oh yeah, you, you can eat that one if you want to, but uh, I'd rather you get a Juliet. You want it? Okay, you can have it. Um, and uh, anyway, a lot of these coming in, we've pulled quite a few of them, and uh, they're very nice. Uh, they slice well, they eat well. Uh, no complaints in there, all over the place. Now, the next row is called Martha Washington, and I don't know if you can tell the color, uh, but it's a pink um, tomato. It's the first pink tomato I've actually grown. They're delicious. Um, I was going to kind of get in there, but I can't, I can't get in there uh, because there's too much vegetation. So we'll go over here to the glorious Juliet tomatoes, uh, of which you saw Frankie uh, partaking um, a little while ago. They're just, uh, these are coming in like crazy. Uh, um, and uh, usually, uh, every once in a while, I torture my, my viewers by, uh, you know, picking a few of these live and pop them in my mouth. Because they're so great. Oh. I just can't resist. And uh, this is Juliet's, which a small tomato, just a little bit bigger than a cherry tomato. And I just love them. Um, I use them in sandwiches and everything else. Um, but uh, they they ripen early. They're sweet. And picking one off the plant while it's still warm from the sun is just uh, amazing. Um, this is what it looks like underneath all the uh, tomatoes. Uh, but here's another one of the uh, um, Martha Washington. See that nice pink color? Isn't that neat? Uh, very nice. Anyway, don't you think so, Frankie? Cruising for more tomatoes, huh? Yeah, me too. All right.
Next to the tomatoes are peppers. These are shishito and aren't they lovely? Brilliant red and um, they're delicious as well. And they're still just starting to come in in the red color <clears throat> but we've been pulling them for a while. Uh, also in the sweet pepper category these are Melrose. Again, um, just brilliant red. And these are kind of a, a thin-walled, um, um, I don't know, dry, I guess you'd say, um, pepper. But they're very nice. Very nice uh, in stir-fries. And here's another one of my favorites in the pepper category. These are called Tequila Sunrise. And that, uh, you know, that lovely orange uh, sunrise colors where they get their name and uh, uh, they're just lovely and uh, as with all peppers they're uh, um, easy to harvest and keep well and fun to stir fry in. Now these are um, orange bell peppers and you can see that there's one that's orange down there. These have been a little disappointing just because um, they uh, they tend to, I don't know if you can see that, focus very well, it's not focused very well, um, but they, they tend to um, have flaws and, um, you know, uh, whether they burn up easily or the, the stems break from the weight of the peppers themselves. Um, they're nice peppers when they, when they come all the way in, but uh, um, they're a little problematic. Now, what's not problematic so far are these uh, aswad um, um, eggplants. They are lovely. Look at these things. They're big, uh, round, and uh, purple. And, of course, I always say I, I like having unusual colors in the garden. And uh, uh, purple eggplant always uh, qualifies as unusual color. And uh, these are just lovely. Let me see if I can get this one. It's kind of dark in there, but isn't that nice? And uh, you can see the size of it. I think they're going to get a fair amount bigger as well. Um, that brings us to the end of bed number... What did I say this was? One, two, three, four. And um, which is uh, leeks. Now, the leeks have been great this year. I overplanted them. Um, purposefully so that I would um, you know pull them and use them early and uh, that's worked out really well I've had them in several stir-fry dishes and then uh, these others uh, um, I don't want to wait too long because that's what I've done in the past um, but there's some fine potato leek soup uh, in the near future from uh, this stuff which has come, come along quite well. Now, this mess here uh, was supposed to be um, red clover ground cover. Now, there's the nice red clover, um, and uh, that's kind of the way I envisioned it, but I envisioned that to be like that all over instead of also this stuff and this stuff and grass and everything else that's in here. So this has been kind of a battle between the red clover ground cover and the weeds. And um, so far it's a tie. Maybe the weeds are winning. Uh, so it looks like I'm going to have to, if I do this again, I'll have to plant and then weed um, so that the, the clover itself gets a strong foothold. But uh, what has got a strong foothold are these guys. This is my uh, sunflower planting, and up there is my first sunflower in the bed here. Let's see if I can zoom in there. Can I zoom in there? Yeah, it's pretty severely backlit, but there you can get a good shot of it. Um, anyway, that guy is like 10 feet off the ground. Um, and you can see why I was originally thinking of making an entire bed of sunflowers because 
Oh, look at that. That's just an impressive stand. Maybe I'll intercut uh, something that shows me standing there uh, to give you a sense of what the height is. Um, but it's uh, <laughs> they are they are just incredible how tall they are. And um, I showed you the one that's blooming. I'm hoping for some more blooms uh, right next to them. And no less impressive in height <laughs> is this corn. Um, and uh, that corn that you're looking at right there is again, that's got to be 10 feet tall, and I'm not exaggerating. Uh, and I've got a little silk here, which means I got an ear of corn coming in, and there's another one right there. Now, this is my eating corn. Uh, it's a yellow corn. Um, I forget the name of it. Um, Bedwells or something like that. And the funny thing about this is uh, I showed you last time is that uh, uh, y You may not be able to tell it from this angle, but it steadily goes from 10 feet down to uh, Five feet tall at this end and that's all due to the fact that it's planted so close to this huge maple tree um, So down at this end it kind of gets robbed of light and uh, and uh, um, maybe some moisture as well. Um, but we also have uh, corn outside the garden proper. Um, and that's right back in there. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well. Let me come around here to the end. Um, that's our external corn patch. It's all... Um, popcorn and Indian corn and it's it's even more impressive height wise um, let, let's go outside uh, outside the garden here and I'll I'll show you real quick um, uh, how it looks so this is what it looks like out in the external um, corn quadrant shall we say um, those uh, Stalks are easily 10 feet tall, and uh, you can see that there are lots of uh, ears of corn there. Uh, this section right here, I think, is the Indian corn. Looks like there are huge, huge ears. And then um, then the rest of this is, uh, is uh, popcorn. Uh, again, trying that for the first time in... Uh, but quite a few ears of uh, that stuff coming through. I mean, it's so um, it's so dense you can hardly see through there. Um, um, but you can see that there are uh, great ears of corn coming in. And uh, again, uh, uh, eight to ten feet tall for the most part. Now, uh, these are the the volunteer pumpkins that came up that uh, I allowed to grow and in fact it looks like there's you know some sort of a it could be a pumpkin it could be a uh, cross between a pumpkin and a squash um, coming in there I don't expect that to amount to anything but I'm just letting them go anyway they're sort of vining their way through the the uh, corn in there as well but it's so thick uh, it doesn't even look like I can walk in in there very well, so um, But uh, Yeah, planting corn in the in the um, What was the greater pumpkin patch? Uh, has really worked out pretty well All right, well <clears throat> Frankie is enjoying himself in the garden as he always does right boy and uh, we're not going to go out to the uh, orchard this time around because it's just, it's an off um, fruit year. I'm going to get I may get a few, and by a few I mean you know at the most maybe a dozen um, peaches. Uh, nothing else. No no apples to speak of. No um, uh, Granny Smith apples or red red delicious. Uh, and only one of the um, one of the uh, um, peach trees is really producing um, and that's the one that uh, if we're lucky we'll get um, a dozen maybe a half dozen and that won't happen until uh, 
uh, late August, so uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Um, other than that, I think that's going to do it. Uh, I kind of rambled and stuff, but it's a lovely night tonight, and uh, we're feeling better about things here around the manor. And, um, uh, the garden's doing well, and we're doing okay, and uh, that's about it. So, um, we're going to keep uh, snacking on a few things out here, and then uh, go inside and try to get this thing posted. Um, but that's going to do it. Marvin Gardens, um, July 2012. And uh, we'll see you next month in August. And uh, like I said, I'll try to have some uh, some harvesting videos included in the Argus, Ar August, the August video. And uh, <clears throat> that's going to do it for now. Uh, again, thanks for all your good wishes, thoughts, and prayers. Everything's working out for the better, so that's great. And we'll see you next month. Bye, y'all. Is that a good one, Jesse? Good girl. Good girl. Very patriotic. Had a girl. You dig it.